When you run a lucrative maritime cleaning service, you gotta protect your turf. The dominant Blue Streak Cleaner Rast defends its territory, its business, and its family on a daily basis. But when the Don disappears, it's up to one of his leading ladies to fill his shoes. But being willing to fill any role is part of surviving here in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of our theme song to hear more of Cassie's music. Please search Cassie Michelle on YouTube. And thank you to Brian for the creation of this episode's artwork. To check that out, you can follow us uh, on Facebook or Twitter or uh, visit us at ldtaxonomy.com. I gotta write this down. (laughs) But today we're talking about a fish that enjoys working at the car wash. But more on that later. I always think of the beginning of i forgot which futurama episode it is but bender sinks bot wash instead <laughs> it's essentially uh shark tale the movie i've never seen that movie but i've heard it was really bad i mean <laughs> how could it be bad it's it's will smith as a fish yeah, yeah. and jack black is a shark is jack black in that movie I'm pretty sure he's the shark huh i didn't know that I mean, I have really have not given that movie very much thought. I've given the video game more thought than the movie. So we're venturing into a territory of uh, pet pet animals. So oh, yeah. naturally, I typed in on YouTube to get some, like, maybe some snippets of documentaries and stuff like that for research. But all guys talking about uh, how their... How to take care of it. How to take care of it. We're talking about... Y- is it the blue st- stripe or I kept reading blue streak cleaner wrasse? Blue streak, yeah. I I put that wrong into our little our uh, list of animals. Okay, blue streak cleaner wrasse. Mm-hmm. It's a wrasse type of fish. It's a cleaner fish. Yeah, I saw it while I was watching. I think Disney Nature's Dolphins. Hmm. They have they have a or reefs or dolphin reef I think it's called and. Uh, there's a section about kind of the ecology of the reef and how these guys play a part in it. But Blue Street Cleaner Rass, the BCW, is a, is a, is a long name. Uh, so we're going to call it here the Shoe Shine Shiner and Ocean's Ellen Page. Excuse me? <laughs> it's like a play on Ocean's Eleven, but putting Ellen Page there instead. Why? <laughs> For reasons that will become apparent during the major fact. Oh, I see. So there's like there's several things that could be major about this animal. Yeah, this Total one's facts. pretty. It's not totally unique, but the way it's implemented is unique to the the blue streak cleaner wrasse. Interesting. So taxonomize this baby for us. So the kingdom is Animalia. You know mm-hmm. you 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 love it. You're in it. Gotta have it. The phylum is Chordata. Where we got a spine because the class is Actinoptergy, that's bony fish. Mm-hmm. Gotta have a skeleton to have bones. Is that true? I don't think that's true. No, you can have a skeleton that's not made of bones. And I think you there aren't there some fish that have like just a skull. Well, yeah, but like sharks have cartilaginous skeletons. True. Basically, all insects have like chitinous skeletons, exoskeletons. I would actually say most skeletons are not made out of bone. If you want to have an endoskeleton, is that what it's called? A skeleton on the inside? That makes sense to me. <laughs> uh, then you got to have a spine sometimes. The order is last. <laughs> what have you said? You, you have to sometimes. True. It's sometimes you just got to have a spine if you want to have In some situations. The classes, oh no, we already talked about that. The order is labriforms or labriformies. Scientist fish. The family is Labradae. Dogfish. It's the name of the pet shop I'm opening. It is not is not dogfish. I just realized that dogfish is a thing. <laughs> yeah. Everything fish is a thing. So are you and uh, Crustacea, your daughter, going to 
uh, co open, open Labra this Day. Galabra Day. <laughs> Uh, the genus is Labro La- Labroide Labroides, mm-hmm. uh, and then the species is Dimidiatus Labroides Dimidiatus. Dimidiatus. That's fun to say. It is. Yeah. So it's time for not critter groups because it's fish. Uh, it's time for nitty gritty nomenclature, the part of the show where. I ask you, Joe, a question, and that question is not the same every time. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, what is what is the translation for the genus and species of this animal? So we're talking about Labroides dimidiatus. That is that is fun to say. Uh, so what does this mean in Latin and or Greek? I think this is all Latin. Does it mean a divided lips? <laughs> Does it mean B, cleaning purpose? C, sharp beak? Or D, striped scale? Which word am I guessing? Lab- Labroides dimidiatus. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, uh-huh. Divided lips, cleaning purpose, sharp beak, or striped scale? How... Okay. If you said so this, if you said this the, phrase to someone in ancient Rome, what would they understand you have just said? I know, but like one of the two words in each of these has to also apply to the other members of the genus. Uh huh. Hmm. I'm gonna have to go with cleaning purpose. Final answer. That is incorrect. Ugh. Is it striped scale? No, it's divided lips. <laughs> It's yeah. The, it's, the, it's just it puts it puts the um, adjective after the. It's labroides is lip or lip like item, <laughs> and then dimidiatus is uh, divided or or halved. I should have gone with that. That that seems a little obvious. Divided lips just is like, oh, you know the least interesting thing about this fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's like it's because of its stripe. It or its streak, it looks divided, and then ah, it's I it don't goes know all the way to the mouth. But Labroides is a characteristic of all cleaner races, so and they use their lips. Labroides James, they okay. they love their lips. Beep bop beep bop beep doo because I love my lips. Are you ready to hear what this thing is like? in a way that I could describe? Yes, visually like. Okay, so the blue streak cleaner brass is a small fish with a long body shaped sort of like a long arrowhead, mm-hmm. meaning it, it has a pointed snout that widens at the midsection before tapering slightly and then opening back up to a palm-shaped tail. I saw some that were like a, almost a rounded palm, but then others have like a crescent moon at the shape at the back wrasses um, or the blue streak cleaner ass the blue streak see there's a picture on wikipedia the main picture it's almost a rounded tail but then the other pictures down here it's not anyway uh that's a description that will only make sense to you if you're looking at a picture of it already uh, <laughs> blue streaks have an interesting coloration with light blue backs and a dark blue or maybe black stripe that starts from like at the tip of their face, I suppose maybe at the lips uh, and then runs past its eyes all the way to its tail. Um, and then it opens up at the tail uh, and its belly is white for that coveted countershading look that the animals are all into. It is, the, it is the fad this uh, millennia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so younger fish are black with a blue line. I'm not sure if that's they're inverted or if I I didn't see a picture, just a description. But that brings us to their relative size. Ooh, there's only one yes. way to conv- convey that uh, because numbers don't mean anything because we have to, you know, numbers don't mean anything. They don't mean anything. They, you need something in your mind's useless. eye. Welcome to the beloved measure up segment. The official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into LD taxonomy at gmail.com. It's super easy. All you have to do is 
say it into your phone's recording device and email that over. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that's going to be some weird M4A file. You can't use that in Audacity. Don't worry. I can convert it for you. We're so good. But we don't have a new measure of intro this week. No. Get on so that. So that means we get to hear from an animal, and Carlos has to guess what it is. I'll warn you, though, that this audio has a lot of like chatter and talking, but there's a sound in the background that you can hear. Okay. The answer is not human. Darn it. One of these days it will be. Human family. Without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Can you hear that Nazgul sound in the back? Yeah. That absolute ring wraith sound? Yeah, that's that's a perfect ring wraith. That's a, I, I wanted to get off the road quick. Then if the, if you just took this as an audio file, you could name it uh, People Chat Casually as Dementor Suck the Soul <laughs> Out of Harry Potter. <laughs> uh, but is that A, a Gowana, which is a monitor lizard? B, a Komodo dragon. C, a shoebill stork. Or D, an Arabian wildcat. Uh, the first thing, the Gowana. The monitor lizard. Yes. Made famous in Fern Gully. Gowana is my favorite Polynesian princess. It also means family. <laughs> It doesn't. It's neither of those things. It's a lizard. Uh, but final answer? Yep. The correct answer is Komodo dragon. What? I was not anticipating people to be ca- talking so casually around a Komodo dragon. It must the, have been vid- a the video doesn't show the people. I'm assuming it's just a video of the dra- the Komodo dragons. I'm assuming the people are standing behind the cameraman. I think it, it was at a zoo. We've got one at the Jacksonville Zoo, but it does not hiss. Or screech like an Asgul, so maybe not when you're around. It waits. Just it waits till the night to sing its poetry. Uh, Let's talk about length. They're ten centimeters long, or fourteen centimeters max. I think I went with the upper end of average, fourteen. Okay, how many inches is it? Much, much less. (laughs) No, it's five point. Five inches. Okay. So, how many of the diameter of the world's smallest gold coin go into the length of the blue streak? Like in circulation? I don't know. Or like know if it was just from a, a pirate's, t- pirate's it was, balloon? It, it was minted recently. 2020. Made of gold or just the color Made gold? of gold. No, made of gold. Uh, here's a hint. The coin was minted by the Swiss Mint, which is a delightful name. That sounds for, delicious. For for the uh, mint in Switzerland. It and sounds like Swiss Miss chocolate, uh, hot chocolate with uh, with some peppermint in there. Oh, that's good. S- Swiss is just a good, like, food. good for the Swiss. It's you a know, good food to, word. It's a good name, you know. Just tack it onto something else and you've got something delightful. That's true. Like the Swiss, Swiss Army knives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's worth about one fourth of a franc or 26 cents USD. 24 cents USD? Tw- 26. 26 cents USD and it's made out of solid gold? I don't know if it's made out of solid gold. Like, I'm, not, I'm, I'm imagining like that Sacagawea. Um, dollar that's not it's just it's it just looks like it's gold but it's i don't know brass or something like that not actual gold because man like even a fraction of an ounce of gold would be hundreds of dollars well it is a fraction of an ounce because everything smaller than an ounce is a fraction of an ounce um but here's the most important part of the hint it features the image of the famous Albert Einstein with his tongue out photo. This is not the most important part of the hint. 
<laughs> it's that it's that picture I see on so many tank tops <laughs> at college. I don't know. Even if it was the size of a dime, I mean, and it was made out of, I guess it, it can't be solid gold. It has to have like a gold rim or something like that. And you're, we're talking about the diameter, so I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's half an inch, and we're talking about 5.5, so 11. 11 fish. No, no, or no, 11 no. Coins. Ele- yeah, 11 coins going to the length of this fish. Yeah. Correct an- or final answer? Yes. The correct answer is 47.2 coins. What? The coin is 2.9 millimeters or 0.12 inches. I have to see a picture of this because it has a detailed picture of Albert Einstein's face on it and it's basically <laughs> microscopic. Yeah. What is this coin called? Just smallest coin or Albert Einstein like Frank. I don't know. If you type in smallest coin. I, fa- I immediately found a, a quarter ounce Donald Trump go- gold coin worth six hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> oh well no just look underneath <laughs> look underneath that <laughs> that is so that's really detailed but i like i would need to s- see it in like somebody's hand oh i see like uh oh, that is so small <laughs> i still feel like it should be worth more than 26 cents but hey who am i to judge it's the swiss yeah they got it figured out also albert einstein is was austrian so i don't know why he's on the swiss coin because they like him <laughs> sure. So let's talk diving depth. Uh, they dive n- ninety meters to, which is three three hundred feet. They they like reefs. So wherever a reef is in that range, they're gonna be. So how many blue streak depths go into the length of the largest valley in the solar system? Huh. Here's a hint. The valley is the Valles Marin Marineris. Marinara? Marinara? The Vallis Marinara. Delicious. <laughs> How would you say that? V A S. Swiss Mint. It, Swiss Mint goes great just after Vallis Marinara. <laughs> at, at Olive uh, Garden. <laughs> it's a valley on Mars and it's longer than the width of the United States uh, on the mainland. So you can probably see it from space. You can definitely see it from space. You might be able to see it from. A, from earth with a really really good telescope you can de- yes you can definitely see it from space if you're if you're orbiting the planet it's really easy to see all right longer than the width of the united states it could be much longer than the width of the united states but mars is smaller than earth so the united states width uh it's probably like five thousand miles it depends on like would you walk the length of that valley to see you tonight that's just a thousand miles, right? Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's five thousand. I, I always get that, and, and then I would walk yeah, five hundred proclaimers. <laughs> uh, both up. have the same exact message. I would walk a lot, a certain amount of time. Actually, the proclaimers oh. say I would walk a thousand miles. They would walk five hundred miles, and then they would walk five hundred more. Oh, true. Just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door. So both the proclaimers and I forgot who sings the other song. But they would walk a thousand miles. So maybe they're singing the song about each other, and they live two thousand miles away. <laughs> the other song is a th- Vanessa Carlton. Okay. Um, a thousand miles. San Francisco to Baltimore. In my head, that's the same latitude. <laughs> right, it's three thousand miles, and this is three. Oh, this three hundred feet. So good. Ten. The answer's ten. Oh, no, wait, wait, not, not 10. What am I doing? I'm sorry, 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 sorry. It's 300 feet to five to 3,000 miles. So, no, that's that's clear. 10 is not the answer at all. Um, let's figure out how many feet are at 3,000 miles. Okay, the answer is 52,800. Very fish d- depths, yes, very different than 10. 50 you said 53,000 52,008 final answer uh-huh the correct answer is 43,744 oh i'm glad i didn't go with the 5,000 mile with the united states oh it is longer than the united states wait what i must have gotten it, it. Did, i must have way overestimated the width of the united states then maybe it's about about as long i don't know the valley is 4,000 4, 4, kilometers which is what 2,500 miles I guess it depends on what you're measuring as the with the United States from what city to what city. 
I'm seeing measured horizontally from eastern seaboard to e- the eastern seaboard to the west coast. Uh, it's 2,800 miles. That's what I, are you ready for some fast facts before I get into the major fact? Yes, 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 yes. Before you get into the major fact, uh, the wrasse is a reef fish that's found in the waters of the Indian and Pacific Oceans off the coast of and off the coast of the islands of Oceania where Moana lives. Uh, to this day, um, <laughs> <they're>, just... <laughs> yeah, they're in a group called the cleaner fish because they like to operate cleaning stations, which are essentially reefside car washes for fish. If fish drove cars, if fish were cars, uh, to, to com- just combining two Pixar movies together. Yeah. <laughs> and Moana, <laughs> just every Pixar movie and Disney movie, uh, Cleaning stations are areas uh, of a reef that fish somehow know that they can get parasites removed. Um, and they may know this by the this activity that the wrasse will do. The wrasse will greet customers by twerking. Ew. Literally. Uh, fishbase.com says, An unfamiliar visitor is usually greeted by dance-like movements with the tail maneuvering the back part of the body up and down. Specific movements where the if where the fish tech- tries to uh, do a handstand and put its feet up against a door and wiggle its butt. That's an extreme twerk. That is an extreme twerk. That's not you, you know that's not your run of the mill twerk. That's advanced. It's only for, but this not, is textbook not for, for a, <laughs> not for the faint of heart. Young fish that don't know no better will greet divers this way when they get close. Hmm. Yeah, is this doing anything for you, Mr. Diver? I just like the fact that, like, that thing I've never seen before, that thing's a giant who knows what. I think I'm going to clean it. I'm going to clean that thing. Yeah, I get I you, you can't be picky with your customers if you're trying to run a business. That's true. If you've got parasites, you know, you've got service. <laughs> as long as your parasites are green uh, <laughs> uh, so this movement and their tell- telltale stripe help larger fish identify them as cleaners and not as a food source uh, other fish like the blenny and the jets uh, mimic the cleaners and use the deception to get close enough to a bigger fish to tear chunks out of them that's, so that's they, really rude it is rude. It's, it's like running a, it's like running a, a cutthroat competitive business. It's it's that really doesn't value its customers. This is okay. So we fi- we do get to put this in there when we should have for the butcher bird. But this is like Sweeney Todd. You go in for a for a haircut and he just slits your throat. <laughs> exactly. Except for, it's uh, usually the bigger fish survives, uh, and doesn't get turned into. Uh, well, it does get turned into food. <laughs> Just it's also survives. Does he eat the? I have never seen the movie and or the play, and I I never will. I hate the idea. I'll never watch it. Here's another weird thing about them: blue streaks can pass our tried and true self aware test to test animal intelligence and whether or not they're self aware. We put a smudge on of of paint or something on an animal's face and then show them a mirror. No. It's not a funny prank on nature. Uh, we want them to know that they, if they think the animal in the mirror is another species or a reflection of themselves. So the idea is that if you recognize yourself in a mirror, you are aware that you exist as a separate entity from the world around you. Yeah, we talked about this in the, the Manta Ray episode. Yeah. And the article I was reading this in said, oh, this is the first fish to, to do this. Like, nope. Apparently not. Mantas. Oh, m- maybe they met the first bony fish. Or maybe it's the first fish they, and then they, and they found out about mantas afterward. Maybe. Um, so if an animal points and laughs at the idiot with a smudge on its face, they aren't self-aware. <laughs> but if they <laughs> indicate that they know that, that the uh, smudge on, is on their face... They know it's a reflection of themselves. So elephants pass this. Um, so when we put a like 
paint samaj on their face they'll look at look in the mirror and then use their trunk or something to try to let, like wipe it off or touch it or something like that so then it's like oh you are aware that you're looking at a, the image of an of an elephant and recognizing that the smudge is on you um mm-hmm. i don't know how they did this with the fish yeah i don't know how that i feel like paint doesn't stay on very well on a fish uh but they well they they've done this with ants and stuff too so um dogs cats and even gorillas fail this test there's a there's a lot of video of them they just put a mirror in the in the jungle and animals come up to it and there's a a, a lot with gorillas there first like some black backs see the mirror and uh they're interested in it they think that maybe younger gorillas can recognize themselves either that or they are they're interested in another gorilla that they've never seen before that's and it's really play. odd that they can learn sign language but they can't recognize themselves in a mirror uh but then silverbacks maybe it's just their their instinct of like protect the family from other silverbacks and being taken over gets is so strong that they just like Obliter- try to fight obliterate the mirror they 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 usually don't well because we talked about how gorillas are re- reluctant to fight so there's a lot of like slapping the ground and chest beating and stuff around the mirrors but elephants dolphins and maybe the wrasse pass the test but stuff like this is interesting because it also calls into question the nature of the test itself does self-recognition mean you're self-aware uh does recognition of a reflection have other benefits that some animals need and others don't? So it's like we use this as like, oh, it, it, if you recognize a, your own reflection, then you smart. you're self-aware. But maybe not. You know, maybe there's a reason and certain animals can recognize reflections and it doesn't necessarily mean you think about your place in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know that you are a a separate entity but you don't contemplate things and they think that ants certain ants can also pass this yeah test. if i was gonna pick any animal to never be self-aware it'd probably be an ant like because i crush them constantly they also have they're more of a hive mind than anything else true yeah they're you social and they operate ba- they don't have a s- complex central nervous system they just operate based on I was going to say they operate based on chemicals, but so does a central nervous system. <laughs> they, they operate on external chemicals. Anyway, that's all I got for Fast Facts. I am neglected to say this at the beginning, but may the 4th be with you. This is the May. Today is May 4th. It's not. The, this is not the day that you're listening to this, but or maybe it is next year. Uh, but we're recording this on Star Wars Day. But... So we're going to move over to a different Disney property when talking about the major facts, which is going to be called The Dutchman Must Always Have a Captain. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can tell what I've been watching recently. Uh, so Blue Streak cleaner races are extremely territorial and they operate their their whole cleaner services is service is made up of a group of females or a harem uh with a dominant male leading and defending them in order to be dominant you simply have to be the biggest um so and everything's well and good but however if jones be slain he who slays him must take his place meaning if the dominant male dies or leaves the second largest member of the group must take his place as the new dominant male but since all the other members of the group are females then it falls on the largest female to take over but she doesn't just take over acting like the dominant male it involves becoming the dominant male the largest female in the group will change sex in order to fulfill the role of the dominant male this is not uncommon in reef fish though and we've even mentioned like slugs and stuff will often change sex but it's it's not that common in vertebrates for sure 
the process takes about two weeks uh but that doesn't stop things from happening the promoted female will often start the male courtship display and the smaller females will start showing the female courtship display to the new leader within an hour of the dominant male disappearing so they've done a lot of like tests where they have they have a group of cleaner ras rasses i don't know what the plural of that is um and there's one dominant male and they'll just remove the dominant male and see what happens and within an hour one of the females starts to undergo this change um but it takes a long time but it will start the male courtship display of swimming in a certain pattern and and wiggling in a certain way and the smaller females will like turn on their side um to the larger female that is becoming a male this is why i call by the way this this exchange is why I call it uh, Ocean's Ellen Page. Yeah, I think we get it. So there's often a few weeks of impotent spawning behavior while the largest female undergoes the change from female to male. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. Females from high density populations, so if there are a lot, if there's a lo- very large group with lots of females, um, some of them will make little sojourns into other harems other groups uh presumably to check out the social situation to see if there's uh, any room for uh going up the corporate ladder to be a, a bigger fish in a smaller pond so to speak um and so they did a 2000 there's a 2001 study of this and half the females that spent time in other harems eventually transferred over to those harems uh, which improved their social status and made it so that they would become the dominant male faster than if they had just stayed in their normal, in their previous harem, because there were so many and they were not the, anywhere close to the largest. When the dominant male leaves or dies, they're they're definitely not up to bat. But when they go to another harem, they might be much larger than the other ones there, and so maybe they're next, they're next in line or maybe two or second or third in line. But if a female transfer over, transfers over to another harem, uh, then and undergoes the the change, um, she will be less fertile, not releasing as many eggs uh, as a female. And mm. so there you have it. <laughs> tried to try to move it into a, a fun piratey direction with uh, Flying Dutchman, but. Yeah, so it's the, the the harem must always have a leader. It's not a it's it's also not a um, a voluntary thing. It's just naturally the there's a there's a biological understanding of the social of the power vacuum that's just happened, and the largest female will just begin to develop male reproductive a male reproductive system. It's just like when as soon as Ragnar Lothbrok goes off on raids in England, somebody tries to take his spot as earl um i'm gonna assume and now you know what i've been watching oh wait 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 that's vikings <laughs> yeah yes that's vikings. yes i was like that sounds f- kind of familiar anyway that's all i got on the blue street cleaner rats you got anything else that's all i got all right may the fourth be with you for you out there in podcast and also with you <laughs> <laughs> He is risen indeed. So if you're out there in Podcastia, provide a mutually beneficial marine service. Take care of your clients and become part of the crew, part of the ship. Like the blue street cleaner wrasse here in life, death, and taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, thanks for listening to the episode. Just a few quick things. As always, reviews and social media engagement are greatly appreciated, but recommending the podcast to friends is the best way to help us grow. If you'd like some LDT flavored merch, check out teespring.com slash stores slash taxonomy teas. That's it. Thanks for listening all the way to the end. Let's 
Death and Taxonomy is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> and I was like, Earl? Huh. Or Yarl. Yarl of Sandwich. <laughs> Um, and that's all I got about the blue streak. My name is Yarl. <laughs> my name is Yarl. I would watch that before I watched My Name is Earl. It's just a, it's a, it's a Viking comedy. A Viking is trying to, is, is really changed his life and is going through a list, making amends. Yeah, that would have, that would, that, that sounds like a, a British comedy show for sure. 